hear some of the things while we observe the in silence for the sad uh, loss of our very dear friend and colleague, Councillor Walter Smith. Uh, requesting traffic calming and pedestrian crossing facilities 
or which I chose not. <laughs> by Mr Richard Shield of the Rural Needs Campaign, asking the Council to oppose all privatisation cuts to Rural Council and, NH and NHS funding by the Tory Government. In accordance with the petition scheme, the petition organiser has been invited to address the Council for up to five minutes. Then the Council will debate the matter for a maximum of 15 minutes before deciding how to respond to the petition. So can I call forward Mr Shield, please? increased 
by 12 million pounds. Labour Council, this is a moment! The side's lost a thousand police officers owing to 100 million pounds worth of cuts since 2010. Now, Royal Needs a Labour Council that strives tirelessly, actually fights to restore neighbourhood policing levels so that residents feel safe and healthy. <laughs> Labour Council, listen to the public! The Mersey Rail management are still threatening public safety by persisting with plans for driver-only trains. And we're on need to Labour Council that works hard, supports the RMT campaign to keep the guards on our trains. Labour Council, listen to the public! Year on year, Wirral's Labour Council is doing Tory cuts and wasting millions of pounds on private sector consultants. We're on need a Labour Council that will open the books and will work with the unions and the public to genuinely try to formulate a legal, needs-based, no-cuts budget for 2018-19. Labour Council, listen to the public! The Wirral Council's Labour leadership say that there is no alternative to working within the Tories' system and the Tory resource allocation. We think that Wirral needs a Labour Council leadership that gets out of the bureaucratic bunker that is the town hall and leads a mass public campaign with other local authorities to replace the cruel Tory government. We're on need the Labour Council that's out there fighting for a socialist future. Labour Council! whilst we have a 15 minute debate that you will observe respect for members of the council who are now going to speak on this matter and I don't want to hear any barracking. Thank you very much. So, we're now going to open this to debate for 15 minutes. Would you like to sit down, Mr Shield? Thank you very much. Any, uh, any members who want to speak on the matter? Councillor Phil Davis. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, Certainly on this side of the side of the chamber, we, I think, are in agreement that what um, we do need as a matter of urgency is a Labour government that will end austerity. I think there's no disagreement on that. But, but frankly, what we've just heard from the Royal Needs spokesman is total and utter fantasy. I have to say. Thank you. Um, I'll just go through some of the points very briefly. Um, that, we, that this group has passively implemented um, Tory cuts, not true. We are all out on a daily basis campaigning in our wards and our constituencies against the Tories. Um, you know, that is just, it really is just nonsense. We're cooperating with the privatisation of the NHS. You know, yes. Absolute nonsense. True. Um, we led the campaign against the closure of the Eastern Walk in Centre, and I'm pleased to say, as a result of that campaign, the Eastern Walk in Centre will reopen in January. That is a, a fantastic achievement for everyone in this neighbourhood. Yeah. Eastern people we'll achieved that. Um, we'll be transferring our assets to a private company. Nonsense. This is a, an initiative we we'll continue to. This council will continue to own all of those assets. But what we will do is we will work with a. Uh, the private, private sector, sector investor yeah. <laughs> to bring in badly needed income to this council uh, to deliver good public services. Because as we all know, from 2021, <coughs> the uh, revenue support grant disappears completely. The lottery uh, three of privatisation. On the uh, Holy Lake Golf Resort, wrong, untrue. Um, no, it isn't. This is another no, issue no, is. to bring in more income to the to the um, to the council. And, and we do work on a regular basis with the trade unions. We meet them, the trade unions on a monthly basis and uh, have a good relationship with them. That's not uh, what the trade unions say. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, in closing, I believe this uh, Will Needs plan will, uh, by opposing no cuts whatsoever, will take this council into illegality. This group will not support an illegal budget. I want to say that very clearly. Because all that will happen no one's is central government will bring in the commissioners and they'll. In, in do what you're cuts, doing. Whether we like it or not. So, um, 
that pathway is a pathway to uh, to oblivion. So we will be moving the motion. I think uh, members um, uh, will have copies. I certainly shared it with the leaders of the other two groups, proposing that we do not support this petition. We do not support Jay. the rural plan on the grounds that it is will force us into illegality. Tanya, we it's not against right. the rural deliverable. We need to reaffirm our support for the rural plan and our 20 pledges. And I'm proud in closing, Madam Mayor, of our record uh, from Great the Tory! We've, we've introduced the living wage for all council employees. We, we've opened a state of the art uh, rural use zone in Birkenhead. We've given an exemption in the private sector. tax to care leavers. And we will be investing next year up to 25 million in improving our children's services. That's a record as a socialist. I'm Where's proud the of the Now, when the petitioner was reading the petition, the members of the council did not make any comment. Could you please refrain from making comment and let us hear what members have to say? I do not want to have to clear the public gallery. I want you to be here to hear the whole debate. But I will do if you persist in barracking people when they're speaking. Thank you. Councillor Lewis. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I doubt if Mr. Shield is expecting any support from the Conservative group uh, tonight, uh, but can I say how refreshing it is that there are finally people in this council chamber who are prepared to stand up and talk about their socialist beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> Too long, Madam Mayor, the administration has relied on anti-Tory rhetoric to keep the troops happy. Now the troops want action, not just words. Madam Mayor, it's no good the leader of the council talking about socialism in public if he's practising casino capitalism in private. Yeah. It is nine years, Madam Mayor, since the crash. It is seven years since Cameron walked into number 10 Downing Street. And it's five years since the current leader was elected as leader of this council. Is this really the best he can do? A strongly worded letter to the government. Phil, she's used to dealing with ISIS, with Trump, with Putin, and even, God forbid, Boris. A strongly worded letter. A strongly It seems, Madam Mayor, it's the Labour group that needs to remind not to barrack people, not the new group. If we look at the history of this Labour Council that we've had for five years, or endured, as some of us think, he has established the World Growth Company as a joint venture company. He's helped more schools to become academies. He's put £1 million into Hoyle Lake Golf Resort joint venture company. Not, I believe, £3 million, but I'm happy to stand corrected on that one. He's fully cooperated with the STP process with the NHS. Yeah. He's, he's, he's really cooperated. The plan is going forward. There's been no objection to it. That's right. The, the leader of the council and the Labour administration closed the last remaining council run respite care centre at Gertrude Court. Yeah. They closed the Dale School in Easton. Yeah. They've increased the pay of the top directors yeah. and they've increased pay on consultants. Two million pounds in the last year alone. The highest paid consultant in this council is now paid one thousand pounds a day. Oh, wow. Shame on you. Shame on you. Madam Mayor, if the leader of the council says he can find he has no money and yet he can find a million pounds for his golf folly. He can find two million pounds for consultants and a quarter of a million pounds on a newspaper that half the borough doesn't receive and the other half doesn't want. Madam Mayor, these are not the priorities of an elected administration for this borough. Madam Mayor, while the Conservative group obviously does not support the aims and objectives of the momentum or we on needs, we do have an amendment to the proposed <coughs> motion that Councillor Davis will be talking about later. Thank you.
petitioner, who is not here, Madam Mayor, who recently didn't speak, for very recently actually joining the Labour Party and for uh, coming among us, perhaps a little bit, I think, like uh, Lenin to the thing of that station. We all wrong. But secondly, Madam Mayor, let me ago. remind the petition's authors that Jeremy Corbyn, in my opinion, the finest leader of our party since Claire Backley. <laughs> has declared unequivocally against a dead end deficit budget, yes. which unfortunately is what would be the inevitable result of the implementation of what the petition is asking for. No, no, no. However, Madam Mayor, the petition does identify desirable policies that can be won. And I believe they will be won, but they will be won only through the election of a Labour government. And Madam Mayor, the petition reads like a plan for salvation, but it shows painful innocence of practical understanding that if Willow were to follow his proposals, we would be swept aside for Tory commissioners to take over. Even the most basic constitutional research would have demonstrated that though the council's political governance changes with electoral preference, its permanent governance is vested not in councillors but in civil servants, those known as the Section 151 officers. They have not only the authority but also an absolute legal obligation to halt an elected council in its tracks and force it to review its position when it makes legally unsustainable decisions. Now, the petition's scriptwriters, nevertheless, call for measures that would not only necessitate a deficit budget, but would also require loans for constitutionally prescribed purposes. And I don't believe that the Section 151 officers would be able to sanction such loans. And it's an absolute fantasy world if the authors of the petition imagine that the banks would issue loans to us that they know we would not be able to use legally. And similarly, Madam Mayor, the Council's reserves are there for defined purposes. They are largely hypothecated, by which I mean that they're set for specific purposes and can only be used within those parameters. So the lie that's been put around that we could dip into the reserves and rescue all the sorts of other things which are being cut through the Tory government is simply uh, a, a, an absolute fantasy. I'll end, Madam Mayor, on, one, on this point, because I can see a flash of the red light. I don't like red lights normally, Madam Mayor. But um, finally, Madam Mayor, Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn, never walked away from the Labour Party. Neither did I. And rather than pay lip service to an incompetently researched anti-Labour petition, I prefer to continue supporting our Corbyn-led Labour Party, which opposes what this petition is asking for, and no, I prefer no, to campaign no, no, for a Labour government in meeting, led by Corbyn, which will be able to implement the policies we want. Unfortunately, the petition is way out of touch with reality. discussion and thought and persuasion helped the reopening of the Eastern Walton Centre. Persuasion across parties, across this chamber, using every democratic means possible in order to analyse the finances and bring about a result. And we don't think we asked for, but we are well on the way. Secondly, Councillor Kelly I would refer to, who has made the living wage. For several years, my colleague Councillor Kelly raised the pay and conditions of staff. You will certainly notice his motion several years ago that started that process for which we are grateful. Some attacks have been made on the council, and clearly I'm no great friend of consultants and their cost. And there is a request in the resolution that was put forward, of the statement that was made by Mr Shield about opening the council's books. I certainly agree with opening the council's books. Yeah, yeah. Where there is some departure, I've not made any attacks on the growth company because I think in the climate where we are with the shortage of developers in Wirral, we need to get movement in order to get houses built for people and in order to get income for the council. So I'm looking forward to that process being successful. 
I am, however, bearing in mind that the Council's cabinet papers for next week talk about a substantial loan to a golf resort, and I think when we get that far, giving money or loaning money to organisations that should dip into their own resources, that I have to be indeed part of the company the leader of the Council. I want to finally talk about some issues. The Local Government Association is the body that genuinely represents all range of opinion in, across the country, all councils. And I will back all efforts they make to try and get more money for local government. I have previously offered, from 2013 onwards, I recall, to accompany the leader to any delegation to London to seek more funding for will. Those, as far as I know, haven't happened. Until then, we have to work through the Local Government Association. They, a few months ago, produced a booklet a policy, Bright Futures, Getting the Best for Children, Young People and Families. That asks for sustainable funding for children's care. I certainly back all these campaigns. <coughs> Mention has been made about whether campaigns are realistic or not. I do believe we have to work within the legal constraints. I do have an amendment to move Madam Mayor. I'll advise Council of it now because it's short. <coughs> council will prepare a legal budget within the resources known to be available and press the government to provide additional resources for the needs of children's services and the whole of them. Thank you. Councillor Tony Norbury. Thank you, Lady Mayor. I think as a, as a Labour movement, which many people up in the balcony are part of the Labour movement, the trade union movement, and the, and the Labour Party members, and <coughs> Likewise, with, with Adrian, I say um, the, the world needs campaigns being put together in, in a way that is articulate. The world needs campaigns being put in, a way, in, in line with the way what the Labour Party manifesto for the many, not the few. And I, I believe in that. I went to the North West Conference where John McDonald spoke about aligning what we do in local government to the Labour Party manifesto for the many, not the few, which was very, very popular uh, with the electorate. The plain lies, we, we should not be attacking Labour Party councillors, but on the same hand, on the same hand, Labour Party councillors need to do more to show their support against this evil Tory government that has an austerity. <laughs> Ever since I have been a councillor, and that's for the last six years, I have had to be part of setting uh, cuts budgets. And that's not why I wanted to become a councillor. The reason why I'm put in that position, the reactive position, and we can't be as progressive as we want, is these Tories here, who are agents of their government, agents of the Cameron government, agents of the government that's in power now, that, that sneaked in through the election, because we weren't united as a party. This, this has been allowed to go on. These Tories have taken hundreds of millions of pounds out of the council coffers, and that's from the mouths and the hands, the, the mouths and the hands of the people of Will. 16 billion pounds they cut from councils throughout this country. Every single one of them and people sitting in that audience there who are Tories are part of that. They're agents of their own government. They believe in austerity. They believe in, in treading the poor down as much as they possibly can. And that's what we stand for. We, as Labour, as a Labour movement, need to do everything in our power to get rid of these. And we can only do that by being united as a Labour movement. They haven't got a movement, we've got a Labour movement. We don't listen to the voices of um, lip, uh, uh, parties that may be influencing some of the more radical things that are being said in that, in that, um, in that, that, that that's been given to us for the will needs. We cannot set an illegal budget. We will not hand our council, we will not hand our council to the Tories and by setting an illegal budget, that's what we'll do, and they'll do more damage than they already have. We cannot do that. And, and also, also as a, as a Labour movement, we need to look at uh, certain agendas that are coming out uh, through the world needs. And I've been part of that setup. I go to all the Trade Council meetings. 
I go to all the demonstrations. I want to see more faces, more Labour councillors. I don't see any Tory faces at the demonstrations. I don't see any Liberal faces at the demonstrations. When we were in Manchester, demonstrating against the Tories. When we were down London, demonstrating against the Tories. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. to sit down a moment. The position we're in now is we've now reached the 15 minutes limit on the debate. We've got a lot of business to get through tonight and I'm conscious that there's a motion being proposed and two amendments. Amendment from Conservatives, amendment from the Liberal Democrats. So what I propose to do is move to those uh, motions now. And I think you have already spoken, uh, all of you, on, well certainly you've, you've read your, your uh, amendments, Phil. Uh, you've spoken on them. If the proposers don't want to say anything further, I'm going to move to the seconders. Okay? So, the seconder of the First Amendment. Yes, are you going to, would you want to read it out here? Let's, are you seconding it? Okay, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Okay. The amendment, Madam Mayor. Council thanks the 3,297 people who have signed the petition organised by the World Leaders Campaign and welcomes their contribution to the debate. Council calls upon the leader to meet with the petition organisers to discuss the options proposed in more detail and hopes the Rural Labour Group will welcome the opportunity to meet with socialist campaigners in the borough. Okay, thank you. So, uh... So uh, seconded by myself, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, clearly I won't go into a full speech about um, what we're going to, what's been discussed tonight. But, but clearly, Councillor Norbury, I think, uh, summed it up as far as we're concerned over on this side. He talked about the socialists should be a united party. So clearly, what we're proposing tonight, we would hope to, to see you supporting that because we are asking for the leader of the council to meet with those people up there. Much of the, the things that they aspire to, we would probably all aspire to when they talk, when they talk about we all rightly want to live fulfilling lives in healthy conditions socially, emotionally and environmentally. It's just how we go about achieving that, how we actually reach those aspirations. So Councillor Norbury, if what you're saying has any influence at all on the leader of the council tonight, you should be meeting, talking to those people in the gallery and supporting our amendment. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Right, um, Councillor Kelly, second the Liberal Democrat amendment. Yes, would you like to say to
of the Labour group voting that down. Um, I would say, try not to applause too early because you would not like the, 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 um, the, the rest of, of what I have to say. I mean, another example maybe where I agree with the wisdom of I'm a only trained, I don't think that is a particularly good uh, idea at all. And again, it doesn't affect our budgets here, but it's the message that we just sent to the mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, if I may just finish now on, on, on the assumption being made by momentum that the return of Corbyn led government would make any sort of such difference, it sort of ignores, does it not, the elephant in the room? And that elephant is, of course, Corbyn's behaviour towards the whole issue of Brexit in particular. Rubbish. Specifically, Rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it's doing a great the United Kingdom of of the single market of customers. In fact, Corbyn has facilitated this Tory government's move away from the single market and away from the EU. <laughs> three things will, will flow from that. Employee rights in this country will go out of the window. The cost of living will go up. And we from our neighbours in Europe, and everybody accepts, everybody accepts that Corbyn will not be able to do the things that he claims that he wants to do. He will be outside the country. Yes, uh, Councillor Davis, I know you did mention there was an amendment, but you, you haven't formally, you formally moved it, have you, or not yet? Yeah, formally move it, and then, and then George to second it. The other, the other two? Yes, yes, you can, yes. Okay. It's an amendment to the motion, to the motion, to the motion. yeah. Yeah, just, just to be clear, um, our motion, uh, which members have in front of them, uh, talks about um, the, the, this administration, we, do, we have consistently fought against uh, attacks on public services by successive Tory governments. We agree about the return of the Labour government is essential to ensure that we have fair funding for local authorities. And in, but in the meantime, given that we are still in an era of austerity, um, we will continue to do what we have been doing, ensuring that priority is given to protecting vulnerable people and communities and frontline public services. But we cannot support the um, document in front of us, the World Needs Plan, because it proposes um, a position, i.e. a no cuts budget, which would uh, set uh, and would not enable us to set a legal and sustainable budget because it doesn't say how we're going to close this enormous funding gap of 61 million. Dry fighting. And I believe, as Adrian Jones quite rightly said, Madam Mayor, it would be contrary to Labour Party policy that says we must set legal budgets. So the, red, the motion finishes off by reaffirming support for delivering our rural plan and the 20 pledges. Um, we, we won't be supporting uh, Ian Lewis's uh, amendment. We cannot uh, have, we cannot align ourselves with a group that is proposing a legal budget. Jay, so Jay, we, Jay, 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 we cannot do that. Jay, and that Jay, is Jay, 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 Jay. If I could just finally remember, right. just be clear, can read, read, this, read the petition. Read the petition. amendment. Is that in replacing our motion or is that in addition to our motion? Could you just clarify? <coughs> it replaces it. Well, if, it, if it replaces it, we won't be supporting the Lib Dem amendment either. Okay, thank you, Madam uh, I'm, I'm conscious that uh, while Councillor Davis kindly supplied me with a copy of the Labour motion, which I've circulated to my colleagues, I'm aware that not everybody in the Council Chamber, or certainly the gallery, is aware of what Councillor Davis is actually proposing. Sorry, yeah. Can you? Okay, happy to, to, to read, it, read the motion out. Uh, this Labour Council has consistently fought against attacks on public services by successive Tory governments since 2010. Council agrees that the return of the Labour government is essential to ensuring we have adequate and fair funding for local government, and in the meantime, Council supports the efforts of the current Labour administration. 
to ensure priority is given to protecting vulnerable people and communities and protecting frontline public services. The Council cannot and does not support the petition entitled Rural Needs on the grounds that the plan it promotes for 2018-19 will push the authority into a position where it will be unable to set a legal and sustainable budget by failing to address the £61 million funding gap. It would also be contrary to Labour Party policy. Uh, Council reaffirms its support for delivering the 20 pledges in the Rural Plan and believes that we will achieve these goals through the policies and strategies developed and delivered with partner organisations across rural and the Liverpool city region. That's our mission. Thank you. Councillor George Davis. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I just want to conclude by uh, seconding this, this uh, motion uh, by stating the, 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 the absolutely blindly obvious that this, this council over since 2010 has lost £150 million pound, uh, been snatched away from by this, this uh, I can't even get the word yeah, this government. and a further £130 million pound to go but we do listen to the public and our leaders <laughs> our leader Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have both emphasised on numerous occasions that they would not support any councillor who votes for an illegal budget. But they do want the to answer fight. to all this is a general election, an end to austerity, and an even balance across the country of all the resources. I shall move, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor George Davis. We're now going to move to the vote on this. So we're going to start by voting on the Conservative amendment as moved by Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you. Call for card vote. Um, right. Um, and, and seconded by Councillor Rennie. <coughs> so all those, well, hang on, I can't say all those. Councillor Abbey? Yes. Councillor Anderson? No. Councillor Berry? No. Councillor Blakely? No. Councillor Brighouse? Against. Councillor Brightmore? Against. Councillor Burgess Joyce? For. Councillor Carubia? Against. Councillor Cleary? For. Councillor Clements? For. <coughs> Councillor Angela Davis? Against. Councillor George Davis? Against. Councillor Phil Davis? Against. Councillor Doughty? Against. Councillor Elderton? For. Councillor Ellis? For. Councillor Fawkes? Against. Councillor Gilchrist? Against. Councillor Green? For. Councillor Hackett? Against. Councillor Hayes? For. Councillor Andrew Hodson? For. Councillor Cathy Hodson? For. Councillor Adrian Jones? Against. Councillor Chris Jones? Against. Councillor Kelly? <coughs> Councillor Kenny, <coughs> Councillor Leach, <coughs> Councillor Lewis, <coughs> Councillor McLaughlin, against. Councillor Blackham, abstain. Councillor McManus, against. <coughs> Councillor Meaden, against. Councillor Mooney, against. Councillor Muspratt, 